Welcome back as the cars have already hit the track and we get ready for race one of three. This is round six of the 99 Shell Championship Series. As we have a look at the grid and new qualifying lap record holder Craig Lowndes in a brand new VT sits on pole from his teammate Mark Scape. A terrific effort for the Cat Ford team and John Bow in third ahead of FTR factory Ford driver Glenn Seaton. Jason Bright, Neil Crompton. It's a Falcon onslaught. Tony Longhurst ahead of fellow Castrol driver Russell Ingall. Out of row by Paul Radisich. He was uh, third fastest in the warm up this morning. Keep an eye on him. Mark Larkham alongside in the Mitre 10 Falcon. Stephen Richards and Garth Tander and the two Commodores, John Faulkner, now without his sponsor and running short on funds this weekend. Dick Johnson alongside Greg Murphy behind them. Back to a much struggling Jason Barguana and Todd Kelly. The toddler returns in the Holden Young Lions car. Larry Perkins, too, finding it's up at Sandown ahead of Forbes. McConville will talk more about Cameron soon. Dick McDougall next. Wayne Garth, the Commodore, makes his debut at Sandown. David Parsons, Paul Hill, Wayne Wakefield. Young Queenslander, he's getting a run here too. Danny Osborne and Anthony Trapp, the Toll Express Falcon. Alan McCarthy, John Briggs. We've got Conway Cotter, Moore, Kimry and Barry Morkham. It's a full grid here at Sandown, and that's going to be mayhem. Who can forget last year's opening round of the Shell Championship Series? Mark and Barry, when we had that massive accident on the main straight. Really was a... Uh, an unbelievable sight, the Bridgestone race analysis, there it is. And we have a maximum grid of 36, which mean, means some drivers miss out for this first race. But obviously if cars uh, D and F and R are out for the rest of the day, they will slip in. 3 by 16 lap races, and it is so tight, as you can see, first to 15th, separated by a solitary uh, second. Unbelievable. Yeah, you just can't afford to blink in this category, can you? Once, one second covering that many cars, it comes down to tenths of a second and even hundredths of a second as we saw in qualifying yesterday. But Paul Radisich, he was equal the time of Mark Scaife in the warm-up this morning. But the trouble is, Barry, that he hasn't qualified well. He qualified oh. ninth, and you can have all the speed in the world. But if you don't qualify well, it's very, very hard to move up Well, the you pack. just get a look down the, back, down the back straight there. It's a long way back to the last row of the grid. The conditions today are absolutely spot on. There's hardly any wind. The ambient temperature would be, what, 14, 15 degrees. Yeah. Track temperature is about the same. So. Uh, Engine-wise, you know, the, the uh, engines love this kind of temperature. You know, it's very it's crispy, dry air, and um, just good for tyres, good for the drivers. You know, they much prefer driving in this um, to compare with like a 37 degrees at um, Northern Territory. It's hard work. Well, it just shows the strength, the importance of qualifying well. The Mobile Holton Racing Team. The most successful team this year, four wins from the five rounds so far, only one win for Ford, and that was the Pertec Racing with Jason Bright. But a massive crowd in at Sandown here. Look at that Whoa. as we look along the grandstand. Absolutely incredible. And good to see, too, a uh, revitalised band of Ford fans. They are very happy at the moment. Pleased to see seven of the top ten, the new AU XR8s. Now, here's a uh, quick shot at... The drivers who will be carrying our in-car cameras today, Dick Johnson, who is uh, pretty emotional at the moment. He's making his farewell to Sandown, a track where he has done an extremely, uh, well, extremely well, and he's done a lot of races here. Glenn Seaton in the uh, FTR AUX R8. He'll carry an on-board again and says g'day. There's Mark Larkham in the minor 10 Ford. Larko has qualified 10th. <laughs> he's ready to go. Do. Not the hand signal there, Larkham. Getting ready for the start. Russell Engel, the enforcer, very much a man back in form at Hidden Valley in Darwin, hoping to continue that form. Found himself a little bit further back in the order, eighth fastest in qualifying, but in a field with the top 15, top 15 covered by less than a second. You really are competitive, even though you're that far back on the grid. It's incredibly tight racing. Russell First corner is going to be fun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Russell <laughs> saying a couple of days ago that uh, you know no one likes to see the one team dominate this series, especially him. So the enforcer is back. And we see the cat Ford of John Bauer tucked in behind Craig Lowndes. Let's see how well John goes. This is uh, his 20th year. He started racing here at Sandown in 1979. So a memorable day for him. Let's get ready to go. Race one of three. Let's hope they get through the first corner. OK, green and away we go. Lowndes lights him up. See a much improved start. Look at Jason Bright comes through the pack as well. They're all off to a fairly even start. Blasting up the inside. And then two Mobile One Holden Racing Team Commodores up the inside line. Jason Bright on the outside there. This is the crunch time. Let's hope he... Oh, good start from Brighty. I'll tell you, he made a great start for Paul Radisich. We're just saying he got a bad qualifying position. Look at that. He's one, two, three, fifth in the order. <laughs> Look at that. 
That is a major traffic jam, isn't it? That is quite incredible if everybody gets through here. On... Oh, no! One of the wind scars. Bit of a shortcut there. Oh, oh no! Mark Gelsky. Mark Gelsky it is. Yeah. Dougal McDougal crunched in there. It was very tight, but here they go. Mark Scaife, in fact, has got the jump on teammate Craig Lowndes. Scaife cleaned up here in 1994, winning both races and the round. Will be keen to do it again. It's Bow back in third. Then Bright, who got away to a good start at Russell. Oh, trying to get past Tony Longhurst. Definitely a bit impatient there, by the looks of it. No doubt about it. These new AU Fords hunting packs behind those two old racing team Commodores. There's five Fords. In a big lineup as they try and track down the mobile Holden Racing Team duo, but it's Mark Scaife, the big break locker, okay. as he breaks hard for Simico Corner, springs it back onto the straight. The brand new VT Commodore, Craig Lowndes, right behind him, put it on pole position yesterday, and right up behind his teammate today. Down the main straight they come. This is the shot looking at the back of Mark Scaife's car, the front of Craig Lowndes' car, as they have already got a handy margin over John Bow in the Cat Ford, running in third. Into the first corner. Through Shell Mastercard. There's Bow, he's under attack already from Jason Bright in the Pertec Ford, who said his win in Darwin hasn't changed that much, hasn't changed him that much, and he is just as hungry for win number two as he was for win number one. Word from the pits, Neil Crompton is in. Boy, he's definitely run someone's cat over Crompton, isn't he? I mean, yeah. he never seems to get any luck. His year goes from bad to worse as they head up the back straight for the second time. Mark Scaife, just saw him glance in the mirror at his teammate Craig Lowndes as he gets in the draft behind the lead. Number two car, Lowndes comes along side by side, the blue flag waving to show that these cars are travelling in very close company. Let's what check it out on the oh, show. Oh, yeah, it's everybody across. Oh, look at this. So uh, that's Mark Larkham came together there and it's with uh, Noski, but it looks a bit. John Faulkner was trying to squeeze his way through there. Last lap around, it was uh, oh, this Crompton's wee. car. First lap tangle. See them trying to push that many cars through. Wow, oh, that's a, a major one. Look at that. Yeah. I was talking with Mark Larkin this morning and he was saying it is definitely a fault with the Falcons on their front spoiler and the splitter right at the front of the uh, the spoiler. It is just like a big scoop and you go off the road. It's like a digger. And it is a big digger and it instantly just rips that off and affects your radiator, your ducts, everything. I have to say it would be a sensible thing to do to say, okay, right. The regulation is the front spoiler has to be five inches off the ground for both both makes. It's got to be the sensible thing to do because so many cars, poor old Neil Crompton, is just devastating. So Craig Lowndes in behind Mark Scaife. A bit of a gap now opening to the cap forward with Jason Bright behind him. John Bauer with a new John Sydney engine on board this weekend, but still not happy with the amount of horsepower he wants. He's chasing more. You've got to have over 600 in these cars now to be competitive. Side by side as Lowndes just comes up alongside his teammate Mark Scape. I don't think there's going to be any panel rubbing between these two. It's been an immaculate performance so far this weekend. Word from the pits, Mark Noski is out of the race. This is a shot looking back at Lowndes, one and two. There is your race update, bottom of screen, under the Dunlop Bridge. This is the top end of the Sandown circuit, the 3.1 kilometre Sandown International circuit. Do you know, it does, it does look, even though uh, Lowndes is in Scape is slip through, it does look as if Lowndes' thing has got a little bit more horsepower than uh, Scape's car. Back straight, that was, yeah, you yeah. watch, look, even, see there's not, out of slip stream, we, you have a look down the back straight, just uh, to me it looks like it. Well, there were four cars in practice that were under the existing qualifying record. And that was Lowndes, Scape, Bow and Seaton. But look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh look at the Radish. They can't get past the cat board, jump out, pass master. Well, Ed Radish is in driving. perfect place now, really, because he's going to get a lot of broken air going through there. And uh, whilst JB's trying to fend off Jason Bright, so uh, leaves the door open for um, Radisic. You look closely at Radisic's car across the top of the windscreen as he makes a move, pulls out of the draft, but it's too far behind Bright. They welcome a new sponsor on board, the uh, Shell Hill Exports, that is Cab Charge, as Mike Conway is off the circuit. Doesn't appear to be too much damage to the car. New lap record for Craig Lowndes, a 112.49. Rather, a 112.41. 112.41, so he takes away Jason Bright's existing lap record. And Lowndes holds it now, who sits in second place behind Mark Scape. If JB is uh, holding him up, it's a shame he doesn't get out of the way then, because uh, uh, Scape and Lowndes here just uh, disappearing. Conway spinning around. 
because they get, it looks like Scafi and Lowndes has just got that little bit of a cushion now, and it's, uh, the, once you get that much, it's the end of the story. Well, they've really blown it out. It was 1.7 seconds yeah. the last time. It's 3.3 seconds the gap now, so they're monstering the Fords around here. I'll tell you what, there are a few Holt drivers complaining at Hidden Valley. They thought the Fords had about 20 more horsepower. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> this is the place where Grunt is proven, and these guys are bolting away from the, uh, the Fords. Well, you've got five Fords in a group there. John Bow in the front of it, and the Cat Ford, here they come, then Bright, then Radisic, Seaton, and it looks like Russell Lingle may have got through on Tony Longhurst in the Castrol SLX Commodore. This is third, fourth, fifth you're looking at here, this group of three. So it doesn't look now as if JB is holding him up, as he's, uh, he's putting out a little yeah. bit on um, Jason. Well, his times are pretty good, that last yeah, time around, yeah. a 112.18 for Scaife, for 112.19, barely a hundredth of a second between the Mobile Holden Racing Team pair. And then everyone behind there. But it just looked at the beginning they caught um, JB up so quick. And, um... Well, I don't know, I reckon those guys could run faster because a little bit behind John Bow, this car's running in a quicker pack with a closing on this three, four, five positions. Glenn Seaton now trying to close the gap. He's got Tony Longhurst, who was very fast in the early oh, qualifying <laughs> sessions. Russell Engel. Russell Engel on two wheels there. Tander's done a good job too because he's come from 12th up into 9th and now he's menacing Russell Lingle. So the old VS, we will see Tander in a uh, in a VT very soon. Apparently it's on its way back from the paint shop, so Tander won't be able to enjoy the luxury of the, the old VS and all the uh, the data that goes with it. He will have to make that transition to the VT. And I must say that Barguana is having a, uh, a lot of very happy time, although he's jumped up into 11th position. So he's come from back in 15, 16, actually 17th to 11th. So Barguana on a forward move too. Meanwhile, then further back in the pack, our leading privateer is Cameron McLean in the Greenfield Racing Mowers car. He's 14th in the pack. He qualified 16th, so he's moving up the order as well. Seaton sitting comfortable, of course. Three wins from three starts back in 1997, the year that he won the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Currently sits in sixth position behind Paul Radisic and ahead of Tony Longhurst. It's a shot from overhead. Not too many passing moves so far, guys. No, it's uh, JB's got the quick slap so far. 111, is that? 11196 for Bow last time around. And the yeah. two mobile cars are running on the 12s. So he pulled out a quick one there in the cat racing for 2.7 seconds the gap. So he's pulled half a second out of their lead that time around. So. John said he's not quite happy, he still likes some more horsepower. Every driver wants more horsepower. <laughs> I don't know anyone that hasn't said that. Exactly. Let's have a listen to the enforcer so he gets stuck in the sand there. seems that the, the pace that JB's going at now, if it had started off like that, or could have started off like that, so they definitely wouldn't have left him. 
2.8 seconds, the gap back to the Cat Ford in third position behind these two. But when you consider that 15 cars are covered by less than a second in qualifying, it's so important to qualify your car strongly because uh, in a 20-minute race, really, if you make a good start, you're just about home and hosed, you can get a nice clean lap in. Uh, let's go back through the field. There's Bao, Bright, Radisic, here comes Seaton. Bit of a gap there now. Look at this bunch here. Stephen Richards is right in with these guys. Bargwana is in there. Greg Murphy. Now Longhurst has lost a couple of positions. Bargwana's there. Then there's Greg Murphy in behind there. So this is proving to be a good battle here. Russell Ingle finally won over fellow Castrol driver Tony Longhurst, who is now under siege from Jason Bargwana. There's Dick Johnson and behind him, John Faulkner. It's a shot from the rear of the Castrol SLX Commodore. When you saw how, how close uh, Russell and Tony Longhurst were together, then all of a sudden Longhurst is back there. It makes you wonder if anything happened, doesn't it? Longhurst has been suffering from the flu for about two weeks. In fact, he's been in bed for most of this week, so it's great to see Tony here under those conditions. And there is a nice passing move going in there. Shell Helix replay. Oh, it's yeah. A so Longhurst just locked her up a little bit on the rear there. And now Russell nips up the inside. Gee, nice move too. So Russell Eagle continuing his charge. Got six laps remaining in this first heat. Mark Scaife and Craig Lowndes. It's out to 3.5 seconds that time around. So Bow just hanging on by his fingernails. Trying to hold the gap to those two, but they're sprinting away. Jason Bright in fourth position. Radisic standing in fifth. Seaton Ingle in seventh. I was thinking, well, looking at Ingle going through the... Oh! oh there's a little bit. Oh! McLean. McLean. It was our top place privateer there. Oh, that's a good one, yeah, nice. 360 and back yeah. on again. He may, he 10 may out of 10 for artistic impression. He may still be top privateer if he can get back on the black oh. stuff. Then here comes Trevor Ashby in the PPG. Oh, he's Microplex got a good... car. <laughs> be... That'll get him going now. Yeah, exactly, won't and be too happy with that. Thomas Mazira making a nice inside move on Trevor Ashby as they go through challenge corner and hit the back straight. So the order stands at Scaife and Lowndes, Bow, Bright, they're your top four. Radisson still fifth, Seaton sixth. Ingle, Tander, who has come from 12th up into eighth position. And ninth is Richards, 10th is Tony Longhurst, Bargwana, Murphy and Dick Johnson. I was thinking, uh, seeing Russell Ingle through the ashes on two wheels, he came, he came on two wheels yesterday. He's got a Ducati 916 and he rode it to the circuit. It's freezing yesterday. And I was taking the mickey out of him because his tyres are still brand new. On oh, the edge. great run out of yes. that corner by John Faulkner. Lost his better electrical sponsorship recently. That's really going to hurt his attack for the rest of the 1999 season. We'll see him in a real battle here with Dick Johnson as they break hard at the end of the main straight through Shell Mastercard, Mastercard corner. Johnson moves back a position. Larry Perkins now leaping into the battle. As I have to say, with that uh, sponsorship thing with John Faulkner, you know, it makes you wonder why they, they've had really good coverage out at Better Electric on it. just makes you wonder why they wouldn't continue. Well, apparently, because all the Better Electrical stores are individually owned, it had to be a unanimous decision that they were going to support him, and apparently they couldn't get 100% support. Oh, so wow. uh, John has taken that on the chin. He's got a bit of damage on the front uh, spoiler yeah. there. As Dick Johnson isn't giving up the battle, the Shell Helix team have just announced Stephen Ellery as the fourth. Oh, 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 oh that's Larry Perkins oh, last year. Yeah. <laughs> I think these guys have found a faster way down to uh, Danny Knoll Road. Forget the black stuff, the green stuff's quicker. <laughs> In actual fact, when you look at it, it's uh, not probably a bad, could not be. A bad yeah, idea. Not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd come into mind for qualifying, wouldn't it, when you think of it? So John Faulkner's through on Dick Johnson, but he's certainly driving hard. And Larry Perkins has come from 19th up into... We'll confirm this on the next lap, but it's around about 15th position, so he's made four at the tough end of the field. And who's doing it well at the moment is Mark Skate. Minor 10 lap count on lap 13 of 16, so not too far to go in race one. There's the gap back to teammate Lowndes and championship leader. Well, they've beaten them into submission. There's the Cat Ford just coming onto the main straight. 4.8 seconds the gap. It's almost out to five now. So Bowles opened a little bit of a gap on these. Oh, this look at Radisic. Radisic charging very, very fast in the warm-up this morning. As fast as Scape, in fact. Yes. They go side by side. 260 kilometres an hour at the top of the back straight. Back a gear. And Radisic sneaks up the inside of the Pertec Falcon. Let's see for two. Well, this is slice of the pie. This is pleasing to see Paul Radisic finally put it together and get a race result. It's not over yet by any uh, means, but he is there and he's finally got some luck on his side. This is the in-car with Glenn Seaton, the Ford Liberty in-car camera. 
And we have got just three laps to go as he chases the Pertec Ford of Jason Bright, the man who got the first win, first race and round win for the new AUXR8 up in Darwin and would like to do it again here at Sandhead, but I tell you, they've got a lot of work to do to catch the Mobile One boys. Yeah, there's a major gap still existing there, and I think it'll exist all season with the restrictions they have on tyres this year. Only eight tyres allocated per car at each race meeting. By the time you go away from the meeting, you've got no fresh tyres to test on, so it really is hampering the oh, oh, Russell Engel. Russell. He's gone, that's a Shell MasterCard corner, the first turn, whilst in seventh position. Russell has lost an enormous amount of positions, they're Boy. flying by. That's really going to hurt his championship chase at the moment. Lowndes storming through, 820 points, 700 points for Seaton in third. And Ingle sitting back at 668 with the left heart hit Valley, but that's really going to hurt him. Now he has come back on there in 18th oh, position. Oh, locked up the rear oh, end yeah. on it. Looks like a bit of a lot, a lot of break on the rear. Yep. And just locked her up as she turned in. She came in a bit too hot, that's really going to hurt his points. Let's have a look at that again from on board. Yeah. Rear end lockup. So he's all on his own. Which came in a bit too hot. Managed to keep it out of the sand. That's the main thing. So Ingle can get back in and maybe reclaim a few points. But Lowndes continues to monster this field. He has just retaken the lap record from John Bow. Brought it down to a few more hundreds. A 111.86 for the mobile Holden Commodore driver. So Lowndes in devastating form this weekend. But he hasn't been able to get past his teammate, Mark Scaife. Um, and uh, credit to Mark too because what we've seen, we saw him do it at Phillip Island. Didn't qualify on the pole position but managed to get through on Lowndes. And uh, he's done the same here at Sandown and doing a nice job, lap 15 of 16. I think you find that uh, Jeff Bretch will say, look, hang on a second, if you can do it nice and clearly, do it. Otherwise, if there's any slight possibility of it looking a bit iffy, don't. don't do it. You no could use. take out both yeah. the cars, which would be oh, absolute exactly. stupidity. This is Mark Scaife's triple imagery. I'll tell you what, Scaife's uh, sitting back fifth in the order on the points now. 560 points to Lowndes, 820. It makes Whoa. sense. It makes sense doesn't. while they can yeah. to keep bringing Scaifey back up to the points. They might end up with a 1-2 by the end of the year. It's very close between where Scaife or Scaife, Bright, uh, Ingle, Seaton, all the guys in the top five. The biggest gap is between Lowndes. One lap to go here at Sandown. Now, Mark Scaife hasn't won a race here since race two in 1994. So it's been a long time between drinks here and between wins for Scaifey. He's going to do it by the looks of things. Those viewers at home may have noticed at uh, Hidden Valley some amazing revolutions per minute on Russell Ingalls telemetry somewhere in the region of <laughs> 8,200. That was actually a discrepancy in our telemetry system. So be assured, Russell wasn't using a big rev engine at Hidden Valley. <laughs> Here they head up the back straight once again. You can see road speed on the left, engine revolutions on the right, gear position in the middle. Just pull six gear, accelerating up this big steep Repco Hill to 260 kilometers an hour. These blokes aren't backing off 6.5 seconds. The gap over John Bow. They've demolished them once again. Louds comes up oh, on the escape in the closing stages, but this is the way that it will finish by the looks of things. Craig Louds right there now with Mark Scape. Scope is the master of putting it in the right place so somebody can't get past, isn't he, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, these, these points will be crucial to Mark Scape. He wants to get right back into this championship. He's sitting fifth in the order now. And he's got a lot of points to make up for the man behind him. Final corner. They come out of Simico corner onto the main straight. This will be it. We're back to the Mobile One Holden Racing Team domination. Scape takes race one ahead of Craig Lowndes. And look at the gap back to third. But well done, John Bow and the Cat Ford team. A deserving position. Steve Renshaw, Kevin Otway, the whole gang, Phil Curtis have been working extremely hard. And Mr. Sunday, as they've been calling him, Paul Radisich, because Sunday's been his worst day this year at every race meeting, has finally finished and in a good position in fourth, the Shell Helix Ford. And that'll be interesting, Barry, for race two, with Radisich starting from up there. Well, yeah, it'd be great, because I'm sure, as I've said many times, we haven't seen Paul Radisich the way he really is yet, or what he can actually, uh, what he's capable of. And uh, getting the luck is the main thing. The victory wave from Mark Scape. Some relief, some satisfaction. And the most important thing, plenty of points in the bag leading into race two. And John Bow and the entire WA based CAT team, PAA, PAE Engineering, Steve Renshaw, the whole gang. Well done to you. And let's see. Luck for his teammate Neil Crompton, who didn't even complete one lap. We saw him in pit lane with a damaged spoiler and obviously more damage than just the spoiler. Well, while Neil was in the pits, Glenn finished sixth. Russell Ingle will be dirty on himself, spinning in turn one when he was in around about seventh position.
But there is the man of the moment. As we have a look at the final results on the Shell Helix race score, Scape and Lounge, of course, from Bauer Radisich. Bright held there for fifth ahead of Seaton. Garth Tander, well done, 12 to 7. And Stephen Richards in the Wins Commodore, another commendable effort. We go back into ninth. Longhurst, Barguana from about 17th to 10th. So the Valvoline boys are coming on well. Faulkner, Johnson, Murphy, Perkins, Larkham, and Dougal McDougal in the top 16. Well, if you think you've had some extreme rides in your life, well, you won't get better than this one.